Welcome to Kibbutz Barkai. We're one of over 250 kibbutzim from Dan in the north to Ayalot near Eilat. We're standing on the highway connecting the coastal plain with the Jezreel Valley and looking southeast. In ancient times, this was the main route between Egypt and Damascus. We settled here in 1949, while the Rhodes ceasefire agreements were still being negotiated. If you want to grasp kibbutz, Think of vision, a dream that is materializing. Usually the reality falls short. Life has a way of fading the rosier colors. The dream fragments into short scenes of day-to-day -day existence, scenes of conflict, of harmony, sad scenes and happy ones. But the dream is always there to remind us where we've come from and where we're going. I love showing people around the kibbutz, first because I'm proud of what we're doing, but also because I see things I wouldn't ordinarily notice. And the questions people ask make me think. So let's walk around. At least we'll see some of what's happening, sort of a quick glimpse. Individual enterprise and creativity is a big factor in the making of our community. Avi, a colonel in the reserves, made us a beautiful entrance. He planted hundreds of rose bushes and a lawn, built a wall of stone, and got some of the artists and craftsmen to make an attractive metal sign. It says, of course, Barkai. If you want to know how a kibbutz is doing, go to the dining hall. See if it's well-kept, aesthetic. Look at the bulletin board and see what activities are planned. Our ceramicist assembled a wall in the entrance, a nice way to get into a good mood for dinner. You can get a good deal of business done in our offices on the ground floor, clear up a purchase order, discuss your work schedule, or buttonhole somebody for a committee meeting. Shraga, Gidon, Mimi, and Svi are at it again, cooking dinner for 500 critical diners. As long as they get more praise than panning, they feel they're ahead of the game. There's always room for extra help in preparing vegetables, slicing meat, and quartering chickens. We do this work on a rotation basis, complemented by overseas volunteers and working guests. Svi and Miriam do the planning and budgeting. Even a small miscalculation can cost us 100,000 shekel by year's end.
Friday night supper is special. White tablecloths and most of the time flowers. It's a family affair and many tables seat three generations. The serving, clearing and dishwashing are done by rotation. So don't be surprised to see the farm manager or mayor serving and the dishwashing machine run by a high school teacher. Barkai, like all the kibbutzim, is like a family with its own special character. From all points and varying backgrounds, we converged on this hill to play our part in settling the Jewish homeland and renewing Jewish life in all its aspects. We're from post-World War II Romania, Polish Holocaust survivors, Americans, Canadians, and South Africans, people from Moroccan, Syrian, and Iraqi families, Sabras, and of course, people born and raised in Barkai. It's our own version of Ezekiel's ingathering of exiles prophecy. In another hour and a half, the dining room will be transformed into a hall with 300 seats and a stage with lighting and sound equipment. People will come in their Sabbath best to enjoy a play, a festival, or just a get-together, after which the floor is cleared and we'll have some folk dancing. On Saturday evening, our dining room transforms to a town hall. All major decisions are subject to approval by the general membership. Investing in a new machine for the plastics plant, choosing committee heads, sending someone abroad for youth movement work. Here also is the forum where our elected functionaries must answer direct questions concerning their policies and activities. Summer vacation is over and it's back to school. The sixth graders welcome the youngsters joining the student body. Rocheli introduces teachers and staff and the children say farewell to staff members who've gone to work in other areas. Parents are always invited and throughout the school year they work hand in hand with the educators. The primary school kids are building their own sukkah with a little help from grown-ups. During the sukkot festivities, they also plan and prepare the parties held in the sukkah. Some work, some play, and others rest. Every nursery and kindergarten has its own sukkah, and the children's imagination and creative energy going to making the sukkah all their own creation. 
Grade school children plan their own Sabbath activities. And birthdays are not forgotten. <laughs> committee is discussing plans for their next nap. <laughs> and these toddlers are on their morning expedition. Lots of creative energy emanates from these kindergarten first grade kids. Their activities combine play with learning. Their teacher, Adriana, gears the first grade schoolwork to the individual child so that by the end of the year, they'll be ready for primary school. The children's houses combine living quarters with play and learning areas. Five of these children have a first grade classroom in the kindergarten. As they grow up, playing, working, and quarreling, their group bonds grow stronger and deeper. Yes. 
serve and up and over. Good serve. Good. And he scored from up. Ita! Ita! If you say to me, it's me. It's easy. Over the years, we've grown tobacco, vegetables, apples, grapes, citrus fruits, roses for export, and sheep. Our agriculture now consists of bananas, avocado, cotton, popcorn, chickens, and dairy cows. Um, there are, there are two kinds of cotton. There's, uh, well, I'll tell you in Hebrew because I don't know it in English, but there are two kinds of cotton, Pima and Akala, that's how you call it in Hebrew. And um, the way you tell the difference is you, you um, get some cotton, and you take it off like this. You take it off from the seed. And if it's, um, you can get it off very easy. And when you finish, it's like black like this. You see? Uh huh. That's then, it. then it's pima. And if it's white and it's hard to do it, then it's akka. Very good. Thank you, Leon. And David, would you like to tell us something else about the cotton? And how you make string out of it is you, you pull, and then you turn, and then you pull, and then you turn. And here's what it looks like after you finish. Oh, that's real nice, David. Turn, this is the Akala cotton over here. And um, when I take it, the thing off, it's, it's, it's harder than the Pima. This, see how, this is as good as I can get it. Like this. Before it was black, right? Uh-huh. And it starts off when it first grows. That's the food. It's, this is how, it's a fruit and, um, and, so, and it looks kind of like, um, a dreidel. Honestly. <laughs> And um, and this is what the fruit looks like when it goes, even before what Leon showed. And it's all covered up, and you can't see some, any cotton right now because it's too young, and, and it's now all rotten, and it's little. It's so long, look how it's so brown, and it's open. I'll try to open it up. Tried. It's hard to open up because it's so hard. Okay, I think this is the seat. I can't. Mm. We milk our 250 cows in this sophisticated, semi-automatic, computerized milking parlor.
60 of us work in our plastics plant. About a third of the production is exported to the United States, Europe, and Australia. Our products include hothouse film and other agricultural plastics, bubbles for packing, embossed plastic for the rubber industry, printed stock, polyethylene sheeting for lamination, and plastic bags. Although we work diligently at creating an atmosphere of peaceful coexistence with our Arab neighbors, it's not always possible to prevent individuals from committing acts of vandalism or sabotage, like this torching of our polyethylene storage lot. We have our own experimental hothouses using Barkai polyethylene film. Farmers from all over the country and from abroad visit and see the results we can get with the Polyon Barkai system. These are primary school houses and schoolrooms. The class is a social unit, and our educators are entrusted with the task of imbuing the children with values such as respect for others, cooperation, equality, fairness, along with regular schoolwork, which is based on the project method. Our children are taught the value of work and self-dependence from an early age. Of course, this doesn't mean that our preteeners are any easier to cope with. We're always building something here. So from one year to the next, things change. R&D 
Oh, we've dropped in on Batsheva and Avi, who came from the States some years ago. Can you imagine getting all your furniture into a kibbutz room and a half? Avi came to Israel as a sailor on the famous Exodus. He spent some years here, went back to the United States, and finally completed the circle and returned with his family to Barkai. Okay, I'm making tea. What kind of tea? Over the years, our housing standard has improved. From tents and prefabs to the latest two and a half room apartment. Although we all adhere to a similar furniture budget, our interiors reflect a wide variety of tastes and ideas. Remember the birthday cake? Here's Grandma Riva with her grandson. Soon all the children from Raza's class will be coming by to wish him a happy birthday and coincidentally eat some cake and goodies. We hope you have enjoyed our walking tour of Kibbutz Barkai and hope you will come see us soon so that we can give you a personal view of our home.